my scrappy friends. How are you on this wonderful Techie Tuesday? Um, it's a great day. Hopefully you had a good day. Um, I'm in my gray and gold shirt from this weekend, and I know that several will be jumping on, not necessarily to watch the design along tonight, but to hear how much money we raised for the Cannonballs for Kane Foundation. So, um, let me make sure. Yes. Um, all right, so let's get into it here. All right, quick couple of reminders. Um, I always do a fun Friday giveaway, and uh, it was Stacy. Stacy said it was a great crop for grain gold, and it was. And Casey, we missed you this weekend. We know you were where you uh, where you needed to be. And hello, Faith. Welcome in. So. First things first, to get entered in the Fun Friday giveaway, you'll want to like this video or love this video, um, share this video, tag a friend in the comments, maybe somebody that said, hey, what were you doing on Saturday? Maybe they saw the pictures on Facebook that you were tagged in. Um, so you could tag them and uh, share share with them the results of all of our efforts. Um, and then any orders placed from last Friday to this Thursday. Uh, so that means everybody who is at the crop will be entered. So if you are at the crop for gray and gold, then you, um, that's one entry. So you can get up to four entries a week. And that's how our friend Jen G <laughs> keeps winning. And also Deb, um, they uh, make sure that they are entered all the ways. So you can too, it's very easy. Um, just a reminder, I spent this morning and yesterday afternoon making and packaging up the September card kits. That's next Tuesday night's fun. Um, so if, you ha if you're not on the subscription, You'll want to um, go to Daytona area scrapbooking.com and then you'll see um, the card kit listed for the 27th and you can go ahead and purchase your kit. Uh, so I'll be mailing those out um, tomorrow and Thursday. Uh, so there's still time and especially if you're local, I can mail those out as late as Saturday and you'll get them. But if you live farther away, I'll be getting those in the mail to you tomorrow. Hello, everyone. Hopping in to the chat. Um, Croptoberfest. Um, I think there we had some signups again this weekend uh, for Croptoberfest. Um, so that is October 22nd to the 30th. If you're already a member of the card subscription, then all you'll need to do is go to Daytona Area Scrapbooking jump ahead to October on the calendar. You'll see all the Croptoberfest listed there. And if you're on the card subscription and all you want to do is the cards and the card challenges, but you want to be part of the gazebo and all that good stuff, you'll just register for Croptoberfest only. If you are on the card subscription, but you also want the paper, you'll just choose one of the paper kits. There's the premium and the essential. And if you have any questions, you know, you can message me and so there's a promo going on right now, Creative Memories. It's the Paper Buffet. And so if you purchase six packs of pages, thank goodness no one's on paper probation. If you purchase one of the six um, limited edition paper packs, then you get a cardstock sampler free. Now, what do those packs look like? This is what they look like. So there's one that matches all the Croptoberfest. You can be sure that I'll be giving some of those away during Croptoberfest. Then there's the Shades of Golden Harvest, the Happy Haunting. So that coordinates with the new. Um, so none of these are the packs that come with these collections. And you're getting a little sneak peek of what's coming. But they complement it. So um, 
the polar lights, shades of polar lights that comes out um, I th later in October. Same with the Christmas, the seasonal sightings. And then the silver and gold, which I would have loved to have had for this weekend, but I'll be stocking up for May to give some of those away. Um, we've got the shades of silver and gold. So um, you, um, I love to coordinate, um, you know, Creative Memories papers. They're so versatile. And with the two-sidedness. It's amazing. So you do not have to purchase all six of these. They're $10 each. There's 12 sheets in a, in a package. You can just purchase one if you want or two or, or none. Um, so the promo goes where you get the free pack of cardstock. Um, that goes just to the 27th, which is next Tuesday. Um, and I can't promise that some of that these will even last till Tuesday, some of these. So, um, I did order some to have at Mount Dora. So they're coming later this week. I ordered yesterday, um, paid for the two day shipping again so that I was for sure have it in time for Mount Dora next weekend. So you'll be able to see some of those up close, but if you know you want one, let me know so that I can set it aside for you. All right. And we're still registering. Thank goodness this facility is huge and everyone gets an eight foot table. If we look, seem like we're starting to fill up, I may um, ask people if they want a full or a half table, half of an eight foot table, especially for someone that's only working on a computer is plenty. But right now we have tons of room. And those of you who went last year know that it's a huge room. Um, and it's going to be a wild and groovy time because it's my 60th retreat. So we will have, um, we will have some tie dye, some, you know, we will have a low key 60s theme along with our wild theme. You know, we're just crazy that way. Hello. Um, okay. Here it is. The big announcement. So you scrappy ladies uh, have raised over $3,000 um, at the crop this weekend to $3,290. So um, that is amazing. And the link, I posted the link to Cannonball's PayPal, which is the donation link on their website. And if anyone still um, feels led to donate, I for sure can update this little graphic. Um, so that's amazing. That means between um, May and September, um, I mean, over uh, almost, almost $7,000 um, this year. So you guys are awesome. You really, you killed it again. And I know that... Um, we're all looking forward to raising some money for the VFW in January. So you guys are awesome. I can't thank you enough. Everybody that donated, so many of you don donated new things that you knew you weren't going to use, that you wanted, you know, to donate to the raffle. And I just kind of repackaged them up and, um, and you ladies bought tickets and bought jewelry and all kinds of stuff. So thank you so much to everyone that donated and purchase raffle tickets, reverse raffles, the reverse raffle is always so much fun. Um, and fun that, um, Faith won the reverse raffle and then she was working in Norman and she got in the car and drove down and, and that was, that was really great. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Um, you guys are amazing and so generous. And you, um, you, you have blessed so many people in, um, in our community and beyond. So thank you so, so much. All right. I think I already said this, but um, those of you that want to get uh, registered for the Fun Friday giveaway, these are the ways you do it. When you share, make sure that it's public. So hit the little dots when we get off here and, and share that. So 
Oh, I see. thank you so much for all the thank yous in the chat. It's all, it's you guys. I couldn't do it without you, and you guys are amazing. So, those of you that were just here for the announcement and not really interested in digital, this is your cue to check out. No, just kidding. Hopefully, you um, will stick around. Yes, Carol, all you have to do is like it, like it, share it. Um, tag someone um, or place an order. And like I said, everybody who is at the crop this weekend, you had your certificate. So even if you just use your certificate for a $10 item, then that I consider that an order. So everybody will be entered who is uh, there this weekend. So you already got one entry and you just need, um, you can just like or, or do all the other things. So I think we're going to have lots of things to give away this Friday. All right. So um, what we're doing today is we're doing an artisan design along. And <clears throat> if you don't know what artisan is, <laughs> that's a whole other Techie Tuesday. Now, it's a piece of software that's sold by forever.com at forever forever.com is the website. And I am an ambassador. That's what the reps for forever are. I'm an ambassador for forever. Long time artisan user because before it was artisan, it was called Storybook Creator and it was sold by Creative Memories. So I have been using this program since it came, since it launched by Creative Memories and goodness, that was, I don't know, before 2010. Uh, maybe like 2007 or eight or something. Uh, so I've been using it a long time. I, so I'm just going to do a design along tonight, but I wanted to um, share with you something that I did recently that you might. Um, um, it's not going to let me. Okay. It's not going to let me do all the things I want to do at one time. <laughs> so what I did, let me just tell you. So what I did was um, the worldwide virtual crop was last weekend. And um, so it's it's from, it's hosted by Creative Memories, but paper and digital scrapbookers can participate. And so I thought to myself, self, what if you created all the sketches? Because um, if you're familiar with the virtual crop, so people, they post sketches um, every couple hours on the in the group. And then um, you use the sketches to create your pages and you tag them with a certain hashtag. And um, then you're entered into drawings that Creative Memories that Creative Memories does for new product. Don't mind if you can hear the dogs barking and my mom yelling in the background. Sometimes she's more, <laughs> she's louder than the, the dark, the, the barking dogs trying to get them to stop. But anyway, um, so I created, um, templates in artisan so that people could so digital people could quickly complete the sketches and participate. Um, so hopefully those of you that use artisan will find that handy in the future. Um, so that there, even after the worldwide crop is over, obviously the drawings are over, but I'm going to leave them in my store on my website on DaytonaArearyScrapbooking.com so that if people want to download them, they're just $9.95 and it's 18 page templates. Um, so it's a good amount. And that's what we're going to be working in tonight. I'm just going to work in that to show you, to show you how how they work. And the virtual crops are the second weekend of every month. So in October, what weekend is that? The virtual crop? Well, I don't know. The first is a Saturday. We'll be in Mount Dora. So I'm not really sure if they're running the virtual crop the weekend of the 8th or the 15th. It's probably in the group. So I'll check that out. But what I will do is the same thing. So when the last... Um, I will, um, you know, be making them as they release the sketches and then you can purchase them for $9.95 and you just have them in your collection. They don't expire and you can use them over and over again. All right. So let's, let's do this. Um, all righty. <laughs> I 
I have to, you have to, sorry, see the craziness. Because I must have dreamt that they fixed that, that StreamYard fixed that, but they definitely did not fix that. Okay. All right, so here I am with the next two page spread in my album. If you were at the crop, um, I was showing it to Deb, the, my, the order, the book that I just ordered last weekend and it came in time for, uh, it came in on Friday. So I was able to bring it to the crop on Saturday. So I'm just working on the next uh, two page spread here in my family album. And like I said, I'm gonna be working in, um, I'm going to be working with one of the sketches from the last crop. Okay, so the way you change your template on your page is there's a, there's ribbons across the top. So this is I'm in the home ribbon, and you can see if if I was moving my cursor along the top here. Um, hopefully, let me actually, I've got to make this. I'm going to resize this so that all of my things aren't in the way here. And hopefully that will be a little easier to see so that my banners aren't in the way. All right, hopefully, hopefully that's a little better. So I'm in the home ribbon and the, I'm going to come all the way over almost to the end here where it says template and there's a little drop down and I'm going to use, I'm going to choose the second option, which is use a page file from computer. Now I'm dialed into where I've downloaded and unzipped the, um, the, oh, and I don't think. Wait, yeah, you should be able to see them. Yeah, you can see them. Um, and I'm going to just do the first layout. So I've numbered them. So it's like 1.1, 1.2. So that's the first uh, challenge. And that's page one and two. And then here's 2.1, 2 2.2. 2 and then three is a standalone. And four. And then five is a two-page spread. So I'm just going to do the... Um, I'm going to do... The first sketch so i'm going to just click on it and say open and it's going to populate this page right here on the left side and then in the top right corner of my workspace is a little save button and i'm going to hit the save and now it'll populate there i'm going to move up Okay, now I'm gonna click over to the right side of the page. I'm gonna click the template button again, use a page from my computer, browse on my computer to where those pages live, and then choose the second page. And say open, and then it's gonna populate the second page. So what I did also, and I'll zoom in so you can see it here, is I, in the little text box that I put on the page, I put September Worldwide Crop Sketch Number One. And that's, if you're working, if you're, if you're doing it during the crop, then you know how to label it. Um, so that you can, if you're trying to go for some of the prizes, you can. Now I will say, obviously people use paper that isn't Creative Memories, um, and but if you're purchasing the Creative Memories digital kits, I'd say that would probably be um, that would probably be be good since we are um, the since the digital um, you are well, especially since I created the sketches for you um, should go a lot faster. All right, so um, and now I'm going to show you how to how to fill in one of these sketches. Um, in the Heritage Makers world, they're called um, click and fill, or no, that's what they're called. Um, now I forget what they were called, but they're 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 called they're also referred to as click and fill, and basically that's what we're going to do. We're going to drop in pictures and we're going to click all of these little squares. Um, 
and fill them with our content. So I'm going to be working on pictures from our trip to Gettysburg. And normally I would use, do many more than six pages, or I'm sorry, six pictures across a two page spread. So I'm also going to show you how you can um, quickly uh, multiply your photo spaces. So I'm going to click on this first picture over here, and I'm just going to kind of go push the bottom up to about halfway. Let me zoom in so you can see better maybe what I'm doing. So I just dragged it up and I'm not even, um, you know, doing it exact. Then I'm going to copy and paste. Now I've done a whole Techie Tuesday on shortcuts. And so normally I would just do control C, control V, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Now, if you paste something and you don't see it on your screen, you can see it on the element side. On the left side of your screen are all the elements that you're using on the page. So I knew that it was, it pasted. So I backed out on my page and I could see it over here. Sometimes it just gets pasted out of view. So now I'm just gonna, so there's my two pictures now. So now I've doubled the pictures um, in that space. All right, I'm gonna do, I can't, I'm not gonna do that down here on this square because that would be really small, but I am gonna do it, um, it's the same thing over here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste. And I kind of like to get all my little, my uh, all the little picture spots going first going, you know, I'm looking at the pictures over on the right hand side. So I'm kind of thinking about it. I've got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pictures. And this is five, but I can probably sneak in a circle over here too. And I'll show you how to add a circle. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come up here to my insert ribbon. So the first, the first tab is on the top left is file, then home. Then we're going to go to insert. Now we can insert an empty photo frame. And so that, um, that's what I'm going to do an empty frame and it's plopped it right here in the middle. And then I'm going to, um, change. I'm going to, I'm sorry, it's a photo. It's not a shape. So then I'm going to come up here to my photo ribbon. That's along the top. It's the second to last one. And I'm actually going to choose the mat. I know it sounds weird, but if we look over on the right hand side, it's going to show you different types of mats. And one of them is a circle. And if you click on that, it changes your cutout over here to the circle. Um, and I'm over on the right side of the page now. Let me see if I, I can't, I can't zoom in on there, but I, you can change the cutout. Actually, I could make a heart cutout. And if I selected a heart, now I have looking back over on the left side of the page, I have a heart now where there was a circle. And I'm just gonna undo because I wanna go back to a circle. So you can actually choose any of those shapes. And um, right now it's 2.7 is the width, but I'm not even worried about that. I'm just gonna say, okay. So here is my circle now. And I'll probably put it, I think I like it there, but I can, I can obviously change where I'm going to put it and I'll make it a little smaller. All right. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six spots on this side of the page. And although I have eight pictures, I could tell when I was picking them that some of them just, you know, weren't necessarily going to work. Okay. So the first picture I'm just going to drag over and I'm going to drag over my pictures in first. And it's a picture of the Gettysburg hotel. It's like one of the most haunted hotels. Um, I don't think we told the kids that until after we left. Um, and then we had dinner at a place called blue and gray. And I have a picture of, I have a close up picture 
And then I also have kind of a more exterior picture. Now it's kind of bugging me that, um, that there's this break in the mat and it's going to be the same. Um, it's going to be all of the, um, so I, I, let me explain what I just did. All right, come back. All right. So I'm going to just con drag this mat and just make it longer. And I'm going to remove the mat behind the square. So that way now everything is kind of connected um, because these two pictures are of the hotel and all the rest of them are going to be of dinner. So actually what I should do is I'm going to move this over here for now. I'm going to shrink this mat and these colors will not be the colors that they, that they end up being. And then I'm going to take the mat behind the square and I'm going to extend that one. So now you can see, I kind of grouped those together and then these are grouped together. Oh boy. So April is at JFK getting ready to fly to, um, getting ready to fly to, to Venice. So hold please. Okay, April is fine. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um, I, you know, when she's at the airport, you just ready for an international flight. You just never know. Um, things have happened before. All right. So, so now I've connected these um, pictures that will be for the blue and gray. And I just realized that. Okay. Um, I just realized I can't see the comments when I'm in this program. So that's always exciting. Um, all right. So now I've got a picture of us eating wings here at the blue and the gray. I actually just found these little flags that were in our, in our food. And then I have a picture of Brendan and I, and there's a picture of, I'm going to maybe put the wings together. So there's April and Aiden, and then I'll put the wing pictures together. One thing that bugs me is when there's a picture with the flash on and the rest of them have the flash off. Like this picture of Brendan and I, honestly, the color looks so much better than the picture of April and I, but it does tend to bug me when they don't, when they don't match. Okay. So now I just have a couple pictures that I didn't use. One's a close up of the blue and gray sign. I meant to ask when I was looking at this because Jackie has spent some time um, in Gettysburg if if she is familiar with either of those places. Um, and so now we're gonna I'm gonna work on the second page. Now this is just the way I like to do it. I like to. Um, dial in all the pictures first and then go back and add in um, all the other. So then the next picture I have is a breakfast. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pictures of breakfast. So I think I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now you can work on both pages back and forth. You just do need to remember which uh, page is highlighted and the outside area of the page will be highlighted. So normally I would do control C for copy and control V for paste, but I want you to sort of be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to split these pictures again. And I'm going to split this one. Oh, it's so I, every time I go up to my keyboard to do control C, control V, Let me see if I can see. Um, okay. Your favorite place, Gettysburg, Jackie, or your favorite place, the blue and the gray? 
Um, all right, and I'm just gonna take this mat out of here and I'm gonna connect this into to one long, um, one long string of pictures. Now I'm gonna hold the shift key and select all of them so that they can all be selected together and I'm just gonna kind of move them down a little bit so that they're centered. All right, now I can drop in these other pictures. So we went to the Lincoln Diner for breakfast. And so I wanna, here's, I might not need a picture of the menu since it is the same as the sign. Um, but then if I find, well, I wish that this picture was a little taller, you can push one up and then grab on the other one and shrink it down. So it's very easy to manipulate. I mean, this is one of the cool things about digital. Um, there's a lot of great things about paper and I love my paper, but one of the great things um, about digital is that, you know, not everything is the same size, you know, four by six. Um, you can, um, you know, tweak things on the fly, which you really, you know, once you upload and print things, um, I'm going to remove this picture. So I'm going to right click photo and say remove. And I am going to put it over here. It's April taking a picture. She was taking a photography class in school. So she was taking lots of pictures um, like this one of me. So since I rarely, um, you know, as, as the, as the people who take the photo, sometimes we don't get in the photo. And I'm gonna swap this one. Aiden's got some hot cocoa. Actually, I'm gonna switch that again. Right, done is better than perfect. Isn't that what we say? I'm gonna come over here, cause this was before our, before our food was served. I'll put April over here and then I'll put me in the middle there. April took. Okay, so now I've got all of my pictures in. Oh, very cool, Jackie. Very cool. We haven't been in, in so long. Um since since this trip, and that was <laughs> nine years ago. We're due. We are due. All right. So now that all my pictures are dialed in, now it's time to do what I would consider the fun part because now we get to color it. Basically it's like, it's like coloring. So I have my gold paper dialed up there from, um, uh, from getting ready for the gray and gold. My problem is this is just half of, these are just half of my kits. I have so many digital art kits, just like paper, except that they don't take up space on the shelf. So someone should put me on digital paper probation. But some of these things I have been collecting, I mean, since this program came out. So um, I'm trying to find the, here it is stars and spirit that might be good to use um if you want to so i picked the stars and spirit here are the borders um for um for it and i'm going to show you how you can just kind of jump off of the color um so I'm going to preview this item by right clicking on it and previewing it. Okay. I just want to make sure sometimes you can't tell how, you know, busy a background is. So I'm going to put this lattice stars and stripe paper and all of these CM papers, they existed in the real paper world too. 
So I'm going to right click on it and I'm clicked on this background piece right here. You can see it going all the way around the back of the page. And I'm going to say fill selected shape. Then another box is going to open up for me to choose the area. So if I just want to use a tiny piece of the paper, I can. If I want to use the whole piece of paper, I can. So I'm going to use the whole piece of paper because it's digital and why not? And then I'm going to say save. Now I can just build this whole page first um, or I can jump over to the other page, but I'm going to let it do its save thing because that would be really terrible if I, you know, overloaded my computers already like, hey, we're live streaming to YouTube, to Facebook. All right, so I'm come over here to my other content. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Fill selected shape. I'm going to right click on the paper. Here's my cutting board. I love that it says cutting board. And then I'm going to fill that. Let's save that again. Let's get a little progress bar and come over here to my pages and make sure that my preview's updated and it has. So now when I go into my content, I can fill these other things with these papers. So I'm going to try this light blue and I'm going to say fill selected shape. It's got stars on it, which I didn't even notice. Um, over here on the preview, but I like it. And I'm going to fill that the next little piece with the same piece. Okay, so now we can see. Now on the sketch, all these little blobby circle things, they're really just supposed to be um, space holders for borders and like the, the circle and these flowers are just space holders, you know, for other embellishments. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of them right now. And I'm going to go to, I'm going to toggle over to my embellishments. And there are a couple different embellishments. I'm going to plop them on the page just so you can see them. And then I'll decide what we're going to. So this is kind of nice. That's just simple. This one is stars, but they're actually kind of muted. And then this one is um you know like a like a flag theme so i think i kind of i'm going to stick with the stars theme here so i'm going to leave this here but i'm going to come up above the page whoops i double clicked on it and so then you get this preview of embedded image and i'm glad that this happened because you know i don't want you to panic when this happens to you so you can just up on the up on the top of your screen, there's a little um, X so you can can't you can close the embedded image. You can actually edit that image if you want in that view, and then save it, and it'll happen on your page. So I'm what I wanted to do is directly above this page are little rotate shortcuts, and I can come in here and rotate those. So I'm going to get rid of these white blobs here. I do need to figure out, oh, I was going to do control C, control V. If you don't use that, um, you'll want to. Now, sometimes I don't like when the star, like the borders are matchy matchy. So I'm going to just flip this one twice so that the, so that they're not all, all the colors are matchy matchy. I think maybe I will just fill this part with a darker blue. And so I'm going to come back over here to my paper and say fill selected shape. And I don't know how we like that, but I feel like maybe the darker should be all the way in the back now. Definitely with digital, you um, can get to if, if you ever felt done is better than perfect, oops, I didn't want another star. I wanted this border. 
done is better than perfect on a traditional page, you will definitely feel it on a digital because the tinkering is endless. On a paper, once you cut that, once you cut that paper, you know, you're pretty much, you know, done. Um, you have to get a new piece of paper. I'm going to sample, let me try it with the red. I'm going to, I'm going to preview it. All right. This could get a little, this could get a little, um, could get a little crazy. Fill selected shape. I like these colors together, but I feel like the darker needs to be over here, maybe. Let's try it. It's digital. We can we can try things. I maybe just want to actually not use that blue star paper. And I think this mat behind here probably be good to white. So hi, here I go, just speedily doing it. So I've selected this mat and I'm going to go on the top left over here above my left page and there's a little fill box and I'm going to select solid color. Now you can make it a gradient. You can, um, you can fill it with paper. You can do, you know, whatever, whatever you want to fill it with. There's lots of little options. So solid color, gradient, transparent from an art kit, from your computer. So I'm just going to choose solid color. Now there's a sample. I just chose a plain old white. I could also sample and come down here on the page and pick a color that's already on the page and it blows it up. So you're talking a pixel. So if you want, just like if I wanted to pick a very light blue or a gray, actually, I don't hate that. Um, you can do that. And I'll see how that looks. There's a, these pictures are a lot of white going on. So I did kind of get um, a little lost. I can make these bigger. So remember I said I don't like them to be matchy matchy. I can make, whoops, I can make one of them bigger than the other. Now the dark blue are definitely getting lost on this dark blue background. So what I'll try to do and see if this uh, rectifies the situation is by clicking on it, come up here to format and click under shadows. So we've got under format, we have element, fill, effects, shadows, sampling. So I'm going to try adding a light shadow because then it'll, you can see now the darker blue is, you can see it. It wasn't, they weren't even seen before, but by adding that shadow, it's a little it's a little easier to see. All right, bear with me for just one second. I'm going to try what happens if I fill, if I swap these. I'm going to just swap these and see what happens. Nah, I think I liked it the other way better. Well, hi, Kim. <laughs> I'm just just now glancing down at comments on my phone. Yes, Deb, you're going to have a great, a great time. All righty. And so now I'm just going to kind of mirror this page now that I've got everything kind of dialed in. So this piece was the blue. And then we added to red. So I'm just right clicking on the paper on the right side, filling the selected shape. And let's get rid of these, this, this. 
I'm going to go ahead and save it because I haven't saved it in a while. And because I've been jumping back and forth between the pages. I just like to, I just like to save every so often, just in case. All right. So now I'm going to come over here and, well, actually it probably make more sense. I'm going to select holding the shift key, both of these stars and this other border. So all three borders are selected by holding the shift key. Then I'm going to copy and now I'm going to click on this left page and paste. And so then all, all of those elements will come over to this side and that way you know, because I made this um, this border a little bigger, then I don't have to worry about did I um, did I do them the same? Now, whoops, where'd you go? I I think I put it over. Where'd you go? Uh, undo. There it is. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Oh, I keep moving it over to the other side. Stop it. So I don't want it on top of that picture. So on the left-hand side, that shows you the order that things are on your page. So you just drag it on the left-hand side and then until it goes under the picture you want it to go under. That's right, Casey. <laughs> All right, and same with this one. I actually want that one to be on top of these stars. And I need to change these mats. Okay, so let's go to the fill over here above the page on the left. And I'm going to fill it with the same color. Now, they're different days. So some of you might have chosen to do completely different pages um, because they are ones the night we got there at night and then we went to dinner and then we got up and went, <laughs> went to breakfast. Isn't that what you do? Then we toured, then we went did the whole, the, the whole tour of Gettysburg. But um, so that'll be a whole other, at least one, two page spread. So this picture right here, the diner was a little dark. So I went up to the color um, ribbon on the top and then clicked on brightness. Okay. So then this toolbox came over on the right hand side and I'm just going to lighten up the midtones. Um, that I find is the easiest way to add a little bit of brightness to your color, to your, without it washing out. You know, if you mess with the brightness, sometimes it can just look washed out and you know what I mean by that I think it just looks grainy let me zoom let me see if I can zoom in you lose a lot of the original character of the so I'm going to put that back to zero and then you can see with I just brightened it up a little bit using the midtones um, and then I'll say okay just, and then I'll do the same thing with this picture of April and Aiden. Just a little bit of the midtones. Um, no, this is a feature. Um, this is a feature. Deb asked if this was a feature of my monitor. And this is just a, um, that that's just a feature of the program. Because I have dark paper and kind of not like a white background. I it tends to make the pictures look darker than they than they even are. So I like to go in on those darker pictures and just lighten them up just a little bit. I still I like the feeling of it being dark out, so I don't want to totally, you know, wash it out. But that's a little better. All right, so now I think all I have to do, I added this one after Everything else I designed, you should know, when I made these templates and put them for sale on my website, 
um, from the virtual crop, those of you that came in late, um, I added a, a light shadow to everything um, because uh, that way it gives the illusion more of that it's like paper. So I'm going to move this one down just a tad. Um, so since I added this one after the fact, um, that's why I did that. Now I have this little gray piece over here. It's supposed to be a tag or something. Um, I'm just going to get rid of that and then we will add something. So now I'm over here in my embellishments and let's see, we've got Liberty, Blessed, Home of the Brave, All American, um, Party Like It's 1776, some really cute um, so I'm going to add this one, but I'm just going to shrink it way down and see what it looks like here. Maybe I need to use this smaller one. This, it's a little more squatty. And whenever I, you know, add these things on, I'm, if you like the shape of it, but you don't I like it, it's a little busy, then I can come up here to the fill again, solid color. And then I'm just going to sample this Navy over here in this sticker and add that. Then I can kind of push it up underneath this photo and just drag it on the left hand side down so it goes under that photo. So you see what I did there. I just kind of added that. Now I can add um, another little sentiment there or what does it say? Land that I love. Or I can put, I'll just drag that on there. So this is the Stars and Stripes collection. Now the digital, just like the paper on Creative Memories, goes in and out where it's available and then it's not available. The same is true of the digital. Um, so sometimes they open the vault, like you know they used to do with the Disney movies back in the day. They open the vault and the stuff that's been discontinued, they'll bring it back. Because why not, right? It's not taking up any room in the warehouse. But, you know, obviously they do that so that there's, you know, people feel like, oh, I have to buy it because it's going to go away. And so sometimes it does come back. But um, that's how they get us to add to our ever-growing digital collection because... Um, we'd hate for it to not be available when we need it. All right, so I'm going to move this one over a little bit because um, the other one is in that position. And now I just need to add a title. Um, so I'm going to add a couple. Let me right click um, I copied that one and now I'm going to paste it. Now here it is over here. I think I'm going to add Gettysburg up here. So I've it, it says title. I'm going to change. I can change it to any font I want. The com the the box for the um, text box comes over up on the right hand side, but you can type right on the screen on the where it is. So Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and hopefully I spelled that correctly. Now I can highlight it and I can come over here on the right side and I can change the font to any font that is on your computer. So if there's a, I am a font collector. I love fonts. I believe there's a perfect font for every, <laughs> for every page. Um, this is kind of a new favorite of mine. It's called Natalie. Um, I, I'm drawn to it. I don't, I like it. I don't know. I don't like the PA on there. So I'm just going to leave Gettysburg over here 
or I'm going to cut this and then I'm going to paste it on this side <laughs> and we do need to go. Sorry, I don't want to keep it. It's just now six. Um, for those of you watching live. So now I'm going to go up here um, right above my left side page. I see the font that I'm using, the size, bold, italics, underline. Um, so there's some quick changes you can make without double clicking on it and having it come up on the side. So I can... I can do that and then I can increase the size right over the top of the page. There's always about three ways to do everything on this program, either by right clicking. Um, I don't know how I feel about the sideways, quite honestly. I think I'm going to put it up, oh, come back, undo. There is an undo button and the shortcut for that is control Z. So I think I'll make it smaller. I think I just put it on the other page, come back. All right. You can drag it across and get yourself into trouble like you've seen me do. Now it's so tiny, I don't even see it. Oh, there it is. That's too small. I feel like um, Goldilocks here. Now I can make these, I can make this bigger. I can make this all one piece and that might save a little bit of my pain point. Did I mention Donna's better than perfect? <laughs> uh. You can see how you could get yourself into trouble. And you really do have to at some point. See, the reason why I replaced it was just so that the lines were the same size. Now, I think I like this a little better. Just for the continuity. Sometimes I like to double click on it so I can see it getting bigger as I, on the right hand side as I click up the size. Okay, that, that I feel a lot better about. And I can even, oh, I did control C, control V on that one. I'm gonna put Gettysburg Hotel over here. Make that a little smaller. And this is the blue and the gray. Um, well, I guess I won't put, oh, come back. I'm not gonna put a hotel there. I'm gonna leave it as Gettysburg. Now this I will use for my regular journal box. So I will switch this to a, a more legible a font for for text and I like um, I like century gothic myself and probably 13 and I will so there is a tendency when you're journaling um, to make it so you can see it on the screen and then what happens when it comes out and it's printed it the font looks very, very big. So, um, All right, so I will come back here and flush, flush this out, but I wanted you to see what that looked like. And I might even need to go down to 12. Um, so like a good rule of thumb is, you know, whatever you normally type in in Word, 
Um, so, and, or if you're in an email and you're using like times, you know, Roman and you're using 12 or 10 or whatever, then um, try to use the same that you would normally use so that it doesn't look like, you know, a children's book. Um, because when it comes back printed, the, the font is just so huge um, that it um, is overpowering to the page. And if you find that the text is hard to read, of course, you can add um, pieces of paper behind or you can make vellum by changing the opacity. Um, I do want to just add on a couple more little, little things here. Um, I guess we'll just stick with our, oops, I'm clicked on the right page, but I added it to the left side. So let me get rid of that. Now click on the left page and now I can add it over here. And I, those are a little big, so I can add that and then add my, um, add my, uh, my, shadow my shadow to it all right so i that i think we'll do it i will come back this still says worldwide crop on the bottom here but i'll write about the lincoln the lincoln dinner and aiden's excitement over hot cocoa with whipped cream and um, april taking pictures for her class and then over here i'll come back and talk about how we arrived just before dark checked into the hotel and then walked to the blue and gray and had a fabulous dinner so that is all i know um they, I was just reading, Jackie said the kids are young. Yeah, I know. And April now is flying off to Venice from JFK. It's crazy. But you also know how fast, how fast time flies. All right. So there's the Gettysburg page. Let me save that. And then I can get off of sharing here. And I actually have to run to, I have a DAR meeting tonight. <laughs> Speaking of um, uh, Americana type things. All right, well, I will stop sharing and I will come back to you. Hopefully I can come back. Hey, I'm back. Um, well, thank you all for watching. Um, if you missed the announcement, um, there will be a post uh, coming shortly. But we raised um, over $3,000 for Cannonballs for Cane. So once again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, all of these Techie Tuesdays, and I actually just um, uploaded more before I was doing StreamYard and they were going automatically. I just put a bunch more in my YouTube a playlist for Techie Tuesday just today. So you, that is sometimes easier to find these than going back on my Facebook page is to go to my YouTube channel, which is also Daytona Area Scrapbooking. Go to my YouTube channel, go to the playlist for Techie Tuesday, and you'll find all kinds of things on Historian and um, Artisan, and but also other cool things too, like how to use Creative Memories Digital Art Kits with your Cricut for your paper scrapbooks. So anyway, hopefully you'll find it as a place for um, useful information. And I guess that's all for tonight. Don't forget to like, share, tag, and those of you that make a purchase, you will also be entered. Everyone that was at the Crop for Green Gold will be entered in the Fun Friday giveaway. So set your notifications so that if I go live, you get a notification so you don't miss that. You'll still win even if you do miss it, but it's more fun to see your name going around on the wheel. Alrighty. Well, thank you all for joining me. I look forward to seeing you on the car class next week. If you haven't purchased your kit, don't forget to go to DaytonaAreaScrapbooking.com and go do that so I can ship those out to you this week. Alrighty, my friends, until I see you lovely ladies again, stay scrappy and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.